When you're playing Chopin's Black Key Etude, there are a couple of tricky spots for small hands. If you can't hold on, let go. There are some places where you can let the pedal sustain some notes for you, but do be careful because you really don't want this piece to sound muddy. When you're going through the big leaps, make sure that you rotate instead of stretching. I'll show you that in a minute. And experiment with fingering to find out what's going to work best for you. I find that five can actually work really well some of the time. So I'll show you some possible fingerings and give you some suggestions for some of those leaps. In measure three and similar places, I recommend using four for the first octave in the figure if you can. That lets the hand stay open through the gesture. So the first half of the bar is one, four, two, four, one, five. And then you can repeat that for the second half. If you can't reach four, of course use five, but either way, make sure you let the hand close a little bit. Not. See how I'm still holding the thumb? But if I let it close, it makes it much easier. In measure four, if you can't reach that left hand E flat, Let the D-flat go, but give it a little accent for some extra heft. You may actually find it easier to reach it if you flatten the pinky side of your hand, and then barely hold on just to the corner of that black key. That almost gets towards a hand position that I like to call the one-eared llama. The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth, the distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great. And it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. So the possibility of llama helps us go from here to here. The one-eared llama is also helpful in measure 17 for the first two chords. It's much easier than Instead of stretching for big leaps, you want to let go and rotate. Here's measure 16 where we have to go a ninth. So if you rotate, it becomes pretty easy to reach that. But if you try and stretch to it, it can feel really hard to get there. In measures 23 through 26, you want to make sure that you let the hand close so you can do the trills between the octaves. If you keep your thumb stretched out, that feels terrible. But if you let it close and just do little tiny rotations, then you can let yourself open the other way. And then let the pinky come in, and little tiny rotations. Then in measures 27 and 28, 
you really have to let go of the high note. There are these little leaps of faith to get up there. You rotate up here and then let it go. And let it go. And let it go. I like to take those staccatos on the high notes as a reminder from Chopin to let it go. Then at the end of measure 28, I recommend playing 5-2-1 for the last group, just like you've been doing. So the thumb will then jump down to the D flat at the beginning of the next measure. In measures 45 to 48, Chopin is really telling us to rotate and let go. There's no getting around using four for the octave here, but you can do it if you rotate. So don't try and stretch for any of that. Rotate for it. And then let the hand close and then open again. And I find that this spot is actually much easier if I focus on the gorgeous left hand. So putting your attention on the cool musical thing instead of the hard technical thing can make the hard technical thing much easier to play. In measures 79 to 82, the left hand has to rotate through those big leaps and really let go. Don't try and stretch for those. Rotate. I use three for the middle note when the interval from the pinky is a fifth or smaller, and two when it's larger. So three on the D flats and two on the B flats. The right hand has to rotate there too, from here to get to the next place. If you try to jump, it doesn't work, but you need to rotate through this figure and then to the next place. Finally, and this won't show up in every edition, in measure 66, the right hand can play the two quarter note chords. That does break the game of the piece because the right hand plays that white key on the F. But if we look at the other signals Chopin is giving us here, he says he wants it pianissimo, delicatissimo, smorzando. He wants it slowing down, dying out, gossamer soft. And my left hand will not play this chord. or actually at all. So I can't do it at all with my left hand, but I'm perfectly happy doing it with my right hand. So my conscience is clear. I'm breaking the technical game of the piece by playing a white note in the black key etude, but I'm doing it for the sake of honoring the composer's musical intentions. And I think that's always, always, always the right choice. So you want to use the easier hand there and remember to rotate and let go for all of those leaps. Enjoy the black key etude and let me know if you have any questions and good luck.